I started my career after my master's degree in pharmacology uh, into the marketing of uh, pharmaceuticals. Primarily, India is a uh, branded generic market, as you know. Uh, so I went into sales and then um, uh, moving up the ladder of uh, hierarchy, uh, got interested into product management. And that's where the communication, uh, pharma communication got picked up. When the social media was introduced, I got excited about it and started using and trying the social media for various activities, which I was normally doing through uh, conventional media like print media or maybe uh, various other method, methods adopted by uh, pharma marketing marketers in India. There are two aspects to social media right now in third world countries. One is that uh, people, the <clears throat> non-serious matters, non-serious matters I mean to say, yeah, uh, a kind of friendship circle or maybe a communication platform where they, they do uh, use it, but then for lesser uh, uh, serious kind of communication where they, they, are, they, are, they are just for the sake of uh, communicating and just uh, for the sake of time pass or maybe a good relaxation uh, <clears throat> method, but then not for a serious communication. I mean to say that um, the, when it comes to pharmaceuticals and when it comes to medicine particularly or health for that matter, the social media somehow has got a perception that it is uh, still on, a, uh, on more of a relaxed side. It is still not that serious kind of media where people can actually look out for some serious uh, advices or maybe uh, the, the, uh, the, the side effects or maybe the usage of a particular medicament, the pharmaceutical in uh, third world countries. I, I suppose that it will take a little bit more time as to by, by what time then people, uh, the, co the consumer will start using it as uh, a serious media and then looking at it as one of the... <clears throat> channels to actually get advice on pharmaceuticals and usage of drugs and various other things which are normally required to be communicated with the consumer. I expect that this particular thing is going to change over a period of time once you will have more uh, newer drugs coming into the market and people are getting more liberal in terms of their openness towards accepting communication from different sources. The interest arises only because a person or his friend or his relative is actually suffering from a particular disorder. Okay. But then, yeah, but then, but then what happens normally is that this kind of a communication is not actually getting on to the target population which is required to be done. So the major drawback which I find today is that the targeting of information, the target population which I am actually directing my communication to can is very difficult to actually catch on to. It's, it's very difficult to actually reach out. They still consider social media to be utilized for friends, for communicating uh, 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 their, their festivals or communicating their, their, their sharing the photographs and not not a very serious aspect of disease. Why? Because making money or your profession of making money is still considered to be a serious matter. It's not as loose as getting onto a social media and communicating with each other and making money out of it. <clears throat> Most of the people, if you start doing it, if you create a platform of that kind, people will consider that someone is trying to make fool out of them. My perspective, personal observation is that it is communication at convenience. And such a communication at convenience, when combined with good advice on healthcare, will have a marvelous effect overall in terms of improving health of the nation. We launched a product in uh, among, uh, uh, say, five years back. Uh, at that point in time, social media was not existing. Uh, so it, it was not so prevalent, uh, 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 widely used by people. Then uh, we conducted a small survey among doctors and it was an anti-diabetic drug. We conducted a small survey among the uh, diabetologists and they say that I am unable to see all my patients in a daytime. So the 
my obvious question was what actually takes away your time because you are a diabetologist your diabetologist is not engaged into any procedure he is not performing any surgery as to where maximum your time goes he says each one of my patient takes more than 45 minutes i need to explain yeah i need to explain them what to eat what not to eat at what time to eat what are the food items to avoid what are the food items and there are set of population whom those who are not diabetic i actually i have to train them as to how not to actually get into a trap of getting a diabetic so i uh, explain them what is a health way of healthy life every day how much uh, walking they should do and various things so the conclusion was that why not make a kind of a small video storyboard where you explain through a small story as to what what all is required to be done if you are a diabetic so we made a small storyboard uh, it was like a normal soap soap opera televised in the evenings on most of the television sets a similar kind of uh, small storyboard was created of uh, 10 minutes and we distributed this the uh, this cd devices to all the doctors those who were attached to us and they started they found it very helpful and they started playing it in the waiting room where the most of the patients are waiting for their turn to come so such kind of things when have been tried and it has been tested and people have found it very effective i very strongly feel that uh, it has got a very very important role in among the generic players generic industry as well particularly that uh, uh, generics uh, still the perception among the patient is that it is a subdued medicine it is a, a second version of the original it is not exact the original brand so this this gap can be reduced by social media it's a one very important aspect of the communication which can be utilized for generics another is there is a set of uh, government bodies those who are actually decision makers as for our key key account managers to actually rope in generics for various products which are already consuming a lot of money from the government's pocket uh, as far as healthcare is concerned so that's that second very important part of it and third is that you can still communicate keep communicating with the doctors because these these are the people those who are actually should be convinced as to generic is exactly the replica of the and especially uh, paul I, i suppose you will agree with me that as in uh, as as we are, we are nearing towards genericization or maybe biosimilar of biologicals it will be more and more essential for a role of communication as well as continuous communication as proving the efficacy of the biosimilar they already have got set of guidelines for print media similar guidelines can be there for the uh, social media as well the only thing is that <clears throat> there could be certain specific additional guidelines which can come out as to if suppose somebody wants to uh, show the efficacy or maybe effect of the drug and then he wants to actually uh get into a level of uh, uh, showing a scene of uh, a surg- uh, operating table where the surgery is being performed and a, and a catheter is being inserted and the drug is injected and then you actually show that the clot is getting dissolved so if suppose you want to do this this kind of a thing they need to actually take care as to this communication is directed only to the set of population or set of doctors those who are actually equipped as well as well trained to accept that kind of as communication otherwise it becomes a kind of a nuisance in terms of uh, people getting afraid of the whole thing or maybe getting some other perspective out of the whole thing uh, uh, nevertheless there, there there are certain set of people those who are talking about uh, patient empowerment uh, so that's another important aspect which is going to come up in 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 due course uh, if, if if a patient suffering from cancer would like to get into a more more analgesic and doctor feel that he should not be then uh, this these are certain th- certain areas which are carefully to be carved out within that specific uh, role of communication as far as uh, such conditions are concerned but then i i i, I feel that uh, definitely there is a need of a set of guidelines from the fda as well as eu regulatory authorities and there should be set of guidelines to be actually uh, uh, guiding uh, companies pharmaceutical companies or maybe 
uh, NGOs or maybe a set of other people, those who are actually in need of such kind of a communication, 